from the Pathway Studios in Johnston proper. You are live from the Path. Pathway Studios here in Johnston Proper. I love it here. That's interesting. Tell me more about that. No, I can't. Oh. Here's the thing is I always think after you say that, I'm going to cover the, the small bit of space after you do the intro, and I'm going to say something with whiz bang, but I put zero thought into it ever, and then I always just say the first thing that yeah. come out of my mouth. Yeah, that's what happens to me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, so you listen to Life from the Path. Here's what we got going on the show this week. Uh, it's pretty standard fare. Uh, I, got, I got a few articles that I want to cover. Mike, Mike has been in attendance this past weekend at a Christian music festival, yeah. uh, post, post-COVID, mm. post-COVID music festival, and so... So we're going to get awesome. his on the ground uh, on the ground thoughts and critiques. Yeah, uh, and then we got some. Uh, uh, hey, I got a few. I, I, I spent a lot of time finding these, but I got a few clean jokes. <laughs> a few Are clean they dad jokes for Father's Day. Uh, oh yeah, I bet. Uh, yes, I bet I do. Did that, you look them up ahead of time to, to like suss them out? Or no, I just said that. No, I just I didn't really mean it. I'm just going to go to that Christians Unite jokes page and tell a few. But I, you've given away my secrets. <laughs> hey, hey, Ben. Yeah, I'm, yeah, Ben. Just to make sure that I cover this uh, in, in, a, in a large arena to try to embarrass you. Yeah. Uh, there's no podcast for like the last three shows. Yeah, but here's the deal. By the mm-hmm. time someone heard this podcast, they will be there. And so Crap. what you're talking about doesn't exist. Dang. Oh, that's embarrassing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if, if just so it does not release my embarrassment, I'm not going to post this one either. Here's the thing. Here's what, <laughs> here's what I, have, I struggle with. So my, I generally get multiple eye rolls for whatever show we did, right? Like my wife listens to them, you know? Oh, dear. And so like, yeah. it's, but, but she is staunch you, about the podcast not coming out because she needs legit reasons to give me the eye rolls. And so, and so it's, it, it's becoming a point of contention in our marriage. Like, and, and, and it always, as, soon as, uh, as soon as the conversation comes up, Ben is no longer uh, like an innocuous part of the family. He's my brother. <laughs> yeah, your brother has, has posted the podcast. I'm like, I know. I talked to him. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that's impressive. She listens, though. Yeah, she does. I think my wife thinks I'm having an affair or something because like, she doesn't listen. She doesn't, she doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How late is the, the whole lot open? Yeah. <laughs> You're still not doing that radio show, are you, Dan? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, sure am. <laughs> you could listen. <laughs> you would know. <laughs> Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Comp- compiling evidence for wary wives all over. You're listening to Live from the Path. Yeah. Um, okay, so here, hold on. Hold on. Check out these stories. Look at these. These, these, are, these are real classics. Uh, no, that one's not a classic. Never mind. No, this, hold on. Let's see what now. Some guy asked, you know who Boris Johnson is? Is he a uh, Russian? No. UK guy? Then yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from the United Kingdom. He's the, he's the prime minister. He needs to like, get a haircut or something. Okay. That's what I always think. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's the guy. <laughs> he does. He, his hair is a little bit unkempt. Uh, so if someone were to ask you, let, let me ask you this question. If, if someone were to ask any politician, hey, do you believe in God? Are you a practicing, you know, whatever? Uh, would you expect, what, what kind of answer would, would, would be an A-plus answer? An A plus, yeah, A plus. Hey, hey, listen, Mister Politician, do you do you do you love the do you love God? Do you believe in God? A plus answer. I mean, he'd have to say like include Jesus in there, and and like if it's an A plus, he says, yes, I believe in I believe in God, the Creator of the universe, and His Son Jesus as the Messiah and Savior of my soul. Okay, Dan wants an open air baptism. <laughs> <laughs> he said A plus, a, a stiff breeze of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's what I want. Okay, that's right. I mean, that's an A plus answer. Okay, I wasn't uh, going for C minus. <laughs> uh, yes, I I have a higher power. With that, what, 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 where does that rank? No, that's a nothing. D minus. That's a D. <laughs> that doesn't make the scale. That's a D. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> terrible. Nathaniel, give me a B minus answer. Uh. I don't know. I feel like this is one of those things where there's there's not really too much in between. Yeah. If although if seven seven said, "Do you believe in God?" and you said, "Who?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah my, okay. All right. So I think we all believe in a God. Uh, yeah. My my family has always been, had a strong faith. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a that's a B minus answer. Yeah. Maybe even a C plus. Like yeah. that's not great. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here, based now that we've set the table, okay, the cranberry sauce is out to can. He looks like, uh, hold on, he looks like that one crazy, who's that one crazed actor that like, 
I mean, he's Nick like, Nolte. Yes, he looks yeah, like he Nick does. Nolte, or like a, a a heavy Shaggy. No, Dan. No, no. I don't see no, that at all. No, no, I could get older, on, like, like Scooby Doo. Yeah, yeah, Uncle Sh- Shaggy's uncle. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's not the same as Shaggy with the loose. <laughs> there's a family <laughs> name. Yeah, there's a family resemblance. He's a little bit paunchy. <laughs> okay, Shaggy Nolte. That's what. Let's go with that. Yeah. Okay. I thought we were talking about the reggae star. Who? Who? Shaggy? What? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. A star might be a bit strong. I mean, <laughs> I think he had like one tune back in the night. Never used those two words in the same sentence before. A known <laughs> reggae man. Yeah, he was the. It wasn't me. That's the guy. Yeah, yeah he's also the angel one. I don't. Okay, give me a few bars of it. Yeah. I don't remember it. No, let's have it. Uh, no, you definitely do. Go. <laughs> he had two songs. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying he had two songs. Be minus. <laughs> all right. All right. So now, now that we've got the span, the question is, how did old Boris do? Okay. Uh, responding to the question of whether he is now a practicing Roman Catholic, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who recently got married in Westminster Cathedral, Quoted from the Psalms while speaking to a reporter during the G7 summit in England. When ITV's Robert Peston asked the question, Johnson initially sought not to respond by saying, I don't discuss these deep issues, certainly not with you. <laughs> okay. okay. S- C? That's a- <laughs> I like his snark at the press. I mean, C, I mean, I get my C plus with the snark. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The, the reporter then told Johnson that Labor Party leader Sir Keir Starmer had said he does not believe in God. Uh, the prime minister then quoted uh, Psalm 14. The foolish man has said in his heart, there is no God. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, what I, are we at? Okay. That's not a yeah. No. It's a dodgy yeah. That's a, is he, uh, what party is he? Z, uh, he's a, he's in the Labor Party. Oh, so they're both the Labor Party. Yeah. Oh, what? wait. No, 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 no. He's not. No, you're right. You're right. What are, What's the opposing, what are the two opposing parties in, in the uh, UK? Isn't it the... I don't know. I don't know. I only, only, I only know the Tony Blair. He's the Labor Party. I'm, I'm going to give him a B minus. The Tories, Labor Party. Things like this that make me feel like a real dum dum. That you don't know world like events. Other, yeah, other people like I'm sure would know it's Republicans and Democrats. Like That's because we're loud. We're like the loud neighbor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we're pretty out front about whatever we're arguing about. We like to argue with our spouse on the, in the lawn. Like we're we're that neighbor to everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but okay. So this is confusing. Uh, people on Google ask, what are the five main political parties in the UK? Five. And then they say, what are the four main parties in the four. UK? Four. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be a... The fifth one's got no traction. <laughs> I bet the guy who's in the fifth party asked that question. He's like, who are the top five? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, hold on. Here we go. There were the five. Labor Party, Scottish Nationals, Liberal Democrats, Democrat Unionist Party. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Okay, oh, this is of no consequence. Yeah. All right, go. Okay, on. anyway. That was it. That I was, just wanted to see if they were opposing parties, and that's why he was he was giving him the business on that, calling him a fool. Oh yeah, maybe. Uh, yep. As part of a James of, of a Bible reading project for the King James Bible Trust, in which a reading of the entire Bible was posted on YouTube, Johnson read from I, what they would call Isaiah chapter eleven. He called the King James version the single most beautiful and influential work of English literature. Yeah, hmm. well, I mean, if you want to feel like an idiot, that's why I don't read it. I think there's a lot of thousand arts in there, and then I get all strung up about what's happening. Here's the thing is it colors the way that you imagine the story going down, right? Like, especially when Paul's talking. For some reason, now he's got a, a sniffer of wine in his hand or something and wearing a super nice dress. Or I, I don't know. There's something about the way that the King James is written that it, I think it colors the way I think of, of the story happening. You think of a Shakespeare play? Yeah. He's in tights and... Yeah, yeah. It feels... With, actually, with a wig. Yeah, it separates you from the the, the street ruffian nature of the gospel uh, good news spreading. Yeah. It seems to orate in high courts as opposed to, like, uh, walking the streets. Yeah. I mean, si- Simon the Zealot is hard to picture when reading it in the King James, but if you take it in in just about the American Standard or the English <laughs> English Standard Version, you're like, yeah, he's pretty rough. That guy's, that guy's fired up. Yeah. He smites thy brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, is that good or bad? Is that... <laughs> Okay. All right. That was it. Uh, what huh. is, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I want to read this story. Okay. All right. All right. I think I'm going to. This is a heavy one. Days before he was found dead in Alabama of an apparent suicide, Steve Austin, a former youth pastor, suicide survivor, and mental health advocate, sought financial help from subscribers to his new letter as his wife, Lindsay, uh, battled a mental health crisis a week after he publicly came out as queer. For a bit of a backstory, Lindsay Swift. Wow, that's a whole bucket of stuff right there. I know. Just that sentence. I know. There was a. I, I'm trying to unpack. I mean, you know, just filter it in my head like little folders. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? There's <laughs> a lot going on here. 
Uh, it says, for a bit of backstory, Lindsay switched from one SSRI to another a little more than two weeks ago. After, okay, that's asking for help for his, for his wife. Uh, he further noted that his wife would be unable to work due to her condition, and he would only be able to do limited work. It's unclear how much he would raise. Uh, days later, the author, podcaster, and life coach was reported missing from his home in Alabaster. He was eventually found dead in a vehicle in the parking lot of a business early on the morning of Monday, June 7th. He had a book set for publication on July 20th. Um, called Hiding in the Pew, Shining Light on Mental Illness in the Church, in which he tackled the issue of mental health in the church. Austin's suicide in his book came in the wake of his May 23rd declaration that he identified as queer, which he revealed to his wife for the first time in 2018. Now, is that is that different than gay? I don't know. I don't know why they're using that word. Yeah, that's unusual for, I mean, for, for what I read, I don't... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. He said, uh, for the past three decades, I've lived a lie, hoping to appease a group of people who only support you if you follow their rules and live up to their unfair and unrealistic expectations. He said in May 23rd, approximately two weeks before he was found dead. I knew I wasn't completely straight when I was 12. Sure, I've been in, in hetero relationships all my life, but that's not exactly who I am. Well, the hiding ends today. So is he saying he's never been in a homosexual relationship? He just would rather be. Yeah, that sounds. That's like what it's implying. Like he's yeah, like he's hiding. Like he was having to hide that. Maybe that's what queer is. Yeah, uh, I don't want to guess, but I, I don't, don't want to do you know do an internet search either. Yeah. <laughs> are you doing an internet yeah. search? No, are you doing it? Yeah, uh, Nathaniel, you're gonna get a lot of lot of strange things in the mail now. Um. So so anyway, the the, the part of this why this jumped out at me is that like um it got me to thinking that there there's just a whole bucket of stuff going on here and i'm going to say i'm going to say the wrong thing yeah but but my goal is to get the, to the right thing you can't win i know, uh but but like with, with this many things going on like with the, the the stuff that he's got going on with his wife um he knows he has mental health struggles that's why he's written the book he's attempted suicide before um, uh, they have uh, 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 financial issues going on. Um, he it sounds like he only works part time. Uh, his wife isn't able to um to to stay there. Like for, for land's sakes, man. Like why why is the man pastoring youth? And and, and I'm gonna ignore just just for a moment the youth themselves. And like from a church perspective, like why 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 is this man having to do this? Like I feel like we like our church care for people who lead other people or even just wisdom on like, are these, are these the people who should be bearing both the responsibility and the burden to, to lead and shape minds. And and the reason I'm, I'm hesitant with this because I think the church has, has kind of failed from, to, to learn from people who struggle with stuff like this, like that. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying just because you have, there, there's something going on um, that is mentally, uh, that you you can't do anything. I just this just seems like a lot, and and, and maybe it's, it's there's 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 a there's a church care in here somewhere that feels like it probably could have kicked in bef- before the man was in. Yeah, I yeah. mean I don't know his underlying well, sexual stuff. I like I, I get like it's not like they people would have known. I don't. Know, it just seems like yeah. a lot. I mean like I've known people who have told me they struggle with same-sex attraction but have never acted out on it yeah um so it's like well would i keep them from working with youth i don't i mean if they if there are precautions i don't know that i would if they're by all appearances their heart is is right and they're you know in their heart of hearts trying to do the right thing i don't know i'm probably gonna say something wrong too um, well, I mean, in general, like you'd say, "Hey, I'm tempted to sin, but I'm not doing it." Well, I, I mean, that. if I worked with, with, when I was young and, and helped a friend work with youth, I was quite attracted to some of the girls. Well, right, exactly. You know, so it's like I, I don't. You can't take that. You know, by didn't do anything. You know, um, so it's possible to be attracted to someone and not act out on it. That's right. Yep, is, is what I'm saying. Yep. Um, what was that? What was that thing he said? What was the post about holding up people's standards that they won't help you if? Yeah, that was. That's when he was talking about telling people that he. That he I'm going to say gay because I just don't understand if I'm using queer right. Um, he said, for the past three decades, I've lived a lie, hoping to appease a group of people. I assume this is directed at the church, yeah. who only support you if you follow their rules and live up to their unfair and unre- unrealistic expectations. Wow. So. 
so I, I guess like and th- this has been true. This is tr- this is true. I think for a lot of critiques I hear about the church, um, is they're improperly pointed. Uh, if your 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 question, sometimes it's the church, but most of the time you you're you're upset with Yahweh Himself. Yeah, like because you don't agree how life should be lived. That's like, right, or or you feel like the things that God has. Um, said about his creation or the way that it was designed to work, and you flat out disagree with him. That's right. This restricts me in some way or another. Correct. And and you don't see that restriction as love. Uh, very similar to like uh, kids growing up with parents. Like I mean, by the time you get between thirteen and sixteen, their restrictions you don't see it as love. You see it as unnecessary rules. And by the time you get to be say twenty five, you go, well, that was certainly love. Uh, right, right. I, I just took I took it in, you know, as as a restriction, and uh, your parents saw it, and it felt like a restriction because you wanted to do the uh, other thing. Correct. And you honestly wanted to do it. You and you felt honestly like it was right. You didn't see any reason why right. it was it was any good, right? Like right. and like uh, certainly um I understand the perspective that says God owes me an explanation here. This feels great. I I love this, right? And like there's all kinds of pernicious pernicious sin that that works that way. Right? Like I mean it's real easy that you know we like to uh, the church in general has struggled with uh billboarding other people's sins while, uh, you know, sticky note in theirs, you know, where, where th- this is the exact same uh, sin as we're talking about with, with, with porn, you know, where they're like, it happens to everybody. We're going to work through it. It's not a big deal. Uh, let's talk about it. Get yourself an accountability guy. It's not a big deal, you know, and, and you will long suffer with a man or a woman who struggles with either extramarital attraction or uh, investing too much in say, romance novels or a, a dude looking at naked ladies on the, on the internet. You're like, Oh again. Okay. So you're forgiven, dude, no big deal. Right. And so like we, it's disproportionate because uh, a, a larger majority does not suffer from it. And so they think it's extra worse or extra bad. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not God's perspective on it. Um, but um, there is, there's a line where you start to say, if you don't trust God, then whatever God says uh, doesn't matter, right? Like there's, there's a lot of things in my life that happens, you know, it happens to all of us where I'm like, look, I don't feel like God's got the ticker on this thing, but I got enough proof that I know God is good and he's ultimately right. Right. So even if I don't believe it right now, I don't trust it. And I, I don't actually see that, that this is causing a big deal. God certainly knows over the long span, what does cause a big deal and what does happen when you start to, um, you know, go against the way his creation is made to work. He made it. He knows how it works. He's the, he's the potter. He, he knows how the vase is supposed to operate and whether it feels right or, uh, to you at the moment, I've had a thousand things where I've thought it, this is definitely the way for me to go only to find out that like, holy cow, did it was, I, I don't know. I got sucked in. It was weird. I shouldn't have, I don't know why I believed in any of that. It was dumb. It was really dumb. And like all it is, is God calling us to, uh, to not do something before we do it. And stubborn humanity goes, I'm going to walk through this. You can't stop me. And I'm just going to have to go through the coals when we do it. And I say all that because the church, um, it's really easy to billboard other people's uh, proclivities, right? And just like the guy that says, Hey, I struggle with say a same sex attraction. Um, but I trust God with it. I'm trying to hand it over to him. Um, it's, it's, I'm, I'm trying to be a, a broken humanity in front of a King. And so I'm, I'm willing to lay this down and say, I'll, I'll fight it and I'll hand it over every day and go, there's no way I can trust myself here. I'm going to trust what God says on this deal. That is different, much different than God. And I disagree. Um, God does not love me. He does not care for me. And he's asking me to do something that doesn't feel right to me. And I'm going to go ahead and abandon everything else I know about God and chuck forward or have my cake and eat it too. And say, I'm going to try to follow all, all everything. I trust God with all these things, but not this one thing mm-hmm. because he can't be right about this, that you can't really hold that in, in, in the same hand. That's not, doesn't make any sense. And so I, I think our, our struggle here is like we tend to get upset, like we bring our emotion into it and, and we get upset at the guy or the gal or the people. And, and at the end of the day, if you take in God's perspective here, he's weeping, he's weeping. My, my son is fooled. My daughter's been taken in and I don't want this. 
and I don't want this at all. And, and it's, God's not looking to, to swing hammers or, or like beat up a dude. And like, we so struggle with this. I, I, I say we, cause it's me. I, I like, I, I'm, I'm really good at a, a heavy conversation, especially with another man, right? I'm, I, this is my area. I, I really, I, I, it, it works, but, um, that's, it's not the right, it's, it's not the right tact here. We're already broken. We're already missing it. We're already mistrusting God. And like, we show up and like, whether he, the church actually made him feel that way, or they just didn't support him when he thought that they should have. Um, I've felt that way too, right? I've been doing something wrong and someone's called me the carpet about it. And I'm like, why can't you just support me in this? Why can't you just leave me alone? Why do you have to act like this is the biggest thing in the world? And like, it's doesn't even make the list of top 10 things that God is upset about. And you're coming after me. That seems like a way overreach only to be months or years down the road and go, thank you, Jesus, for that man. Right. Because I wouldn't have second guessed myself at all. I would have thought this is fine. This is good to go. So I, I, I realize it's a, it's just because society wants to make it a hot button issue and a hot topic to discuss. And people's people are already amped up about it anyway. They're very sensitive to the conversation. And to be honest, I do not blame them. This is their whole world we're talking about here. The way that they define themselves. Um, I think that it's a, a slight miss um, to dump your entire identity just in that. I think you're more of a person than that. And I think God says you're more of a person than that. There's more to you than just how you decide to be in a relationship with somebody. Um, but I, I, I think the church has, they have some growth. They have some growth to do here, um, but they can't back away from truth. I, but we don't have to get amped up about it either, right? We don't have to be rocking in at 11, right? Because God's not. God is sad about this, right? He is angry at the sin and angry at the, at the, at the tempter and the opposer that has lied to his son and lied to his daughter and, and watch them build a whole identity and a life around this thing that's not actually true, not actually good for them, and, and can convince you that your feelings are, act, are reality. And uh, God is weeping over this, and we are more apt to grab a board, and we, we, we could do better about that. And that's a humility thing with, with, with the church. Like, it's a humility thing to realize that, like, we're the same broken lot of people here. We're the same, you know, we're the same humanity and we're all broken. And I just happen to have the right information and the right community around me and a trust in God that my brother and sister are missing. They're missing that right now. And so um, I don't know what actually happened or whether the church actually tr- treated him that way or didn't treat him. That way. My guess is they probably did, or he at least felt like they did. Um, I mean, I, I, like in fairness, and I think this is the, this is the rub, but this is a, nothing to do with, with a, a sexuality question. It's like, you're always going to run into situations where somebody wants to do what they want to do. That is correct. And to the extent that other people don't agree with that because their, their belief is that what they're doing or what they believe about themselves is harmful to them or counter to a to um to, to following faithfully and they say so you're not going to feel supported i would not expect someone to feel supported by me if their intent was to do something that was not good for them correct and so uh, it's so it, it's 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 possible um although although here's the thing i should find a, my my ability here's what here's what i would ask from a from a christian perspective is that we don't we sell it. We, we support or not support actions. You can choose not to support somebody's actions. You should support them as people. And by supporting them as people, what I mean is, is that like, you can always, you can always be praying for them. You can I think, al- you can I think that's the bellwether, Ben. I think the bellwether is, is like, if you are spending your time with Jesus talking about your friend or your cousin or your family member, youth pastor, your youth pastor. If you're actually, if you're spending time talking to Jesus and like, Lord, please let him see what is happening. Please let him see the difference. Uh, and you're doing that. Then I feel like you, you love them. Right. And you, and you want to speak with them and your attitude towards them will change. Right. But you lump them in a, in a group of sinners, which covers you. Right. And, and spend no time praying for them, you're disqualified. You're, you're out. You don't get to talk to them, right? Because your attitude's not right. I pray for people that I love all the time. I pray for people that I do not love all the time, right? So, like, uh, I, if your attitude is, 
Father, can you see what's, I know you see what's going on there. Will you just, will you just do it today? Will you just come after them today? It doesn't have to be me. You do it. Do it. I like to ask for dreams. That's my, that's my go-to. I'm like, Jesus, get them in their dreams. Whatever you want to do. I don't care. I'm open to whatever you want to do here, but I, but please show them the truth. Please give them the option. And if they deny you, please give it to them again, please. Cause that's his heart on them. Uh, and so like, if our heart is to pray and ask God to intercede in the thing, because to be honest, he's the only one that can do it. It's not you and your clever words. The clever words is what got them there. Right. 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 I don't know what type of what, what it is that you're going to say. If someone, uh, especially when it's caught up in, in, in how they think about themselves or their personal identity, like you're not going to be able to talk someone out of what feels is feeling right to them and natural to them or like real to them for like this guy was talking about for the first time. Like, you, I don't know what wordsmith and you think you're going to do. That's going to say, you know, what is best is this God who doesn't agree with you and his way of life, which says deny all those things. I, that's, that mm-hmm. might be the reality, but I don't know if it's a word. I don't know if it's a wording problem. <laughs> yeah. It's not an oration. So as much as, the, as, as much as, as people in a lifestyle outside of Jesus, and this covers all lifestyles out, outside of Jesus, as much as we're asking them and saying, look, you're missing it because you don't see it. And, uh, you don't trust this God. I get that. So it has to be on our end. Um, to trust God all the more because it is his. There, there's no doubt he is sending people after the people you're praying for. There's no doubt. And maybe they, they will continue to deny it. Maybe they will continue to push it away. But don't act like the father is not moving here. Don't act like, the, like, like you trust God to do it or not. Are you going to show up with the board and start smacking people around? You're going to treat them poorly and maybe they'll feel it through your, through your non-love? <laughs> you right, know? right, right. Like the, the solution to people feeling isolated from God isn't to continue to isolate them. That's just it's stupid. It's counterintuitive right. to the way that God, the, and, God's and it's, part and, is. And I do want to make a distinction here because I think um, um, smart people who read Scripture will go, what well, doesn't Paul prescribe kind of this notion of... Um, kicking someone out of your out of your community, and the answer to that is yes. Um, in in the light of continued sin, but that isn't that isn't quite the same problem. I think the proposition there um, implies that someone like like they agree with God. The people you had a they agree with God here. They're not just saying I think this is right. They're just continuing to persist in the behavior. And so I don't know that that's particularly the same as like so, some of this identity notion isn't isn't the same level of the stuff that they're struggling with in Paul's day. Like they're, they're, there's the behavior is wrong, but like, I think this is a slightly different character. Um, and I, and you're not separating some to somebody from something that they don't already feel separated from. Like, that's not the same. I just don't think it's the same. And you, you can disagree with me on that, but I don't, I'm not sure that I would reach for that particular piece of scripture in reaction to what, what, what we're talking about, which is, I think, um, sometimes where, where people have, have otherwise allowed certain behaviors in their life or certain behaviors that they want to do to act as if that is their definition as a person, um, they've already they've already separated themselves from the notion of a God who provides them identity outside of that behavior. And, and, and so I, I think that it's not particularly helpful to otherwise reinforce behavior or thought, thought of behavior is the separation um, when, when really what they need to be reminded of is that their definition doesn't come from that anyway. And so let's start there. Uh, I, yeah, I, I think it's it, the whole thing's sad, right? Like, like this look, is awful. Look what this has produced in this, in, in, the, in this man's life, right? He found, he, that, like there were no, here's the thing is this, this guy um, and whatever, I don't know him. All right. So like we're going based upon as much as you can possibly glean from a, from an article like right. this, but like every, every indication would be he's grasping, he's reaching out desperately for some level of peace mm-hmm. that he's not finding. Um, it could be the un- just the underlying notion of what he's struggling with mentally is causing him to say, well, maybe it is this thing. Maybe this thing is actually isn't true. And maybe this thing is true. And maybe I can finally find like where you're interacting with a- with someone who just can't find rest. And so you start trying other things. And so like when you've got when you've got this notion, you're like, well, maybe this maybe maybe my whole paradigm was upside down or maybe this if I pull this lever, if my life was actually this, I found peace. This this man like awfully ended his own life like mere weeks after he came out publicly to say the thing that was supposed to otherwise give him the peace. Right. To say, if I've been living a lie now, I'm going to live out in the open. And I'm going to live peacefully. And it's two weeks on, and whatever it is that he was grabbing for, like it's the rock still slipped out of his hand. Well, he he was obviously delving deeply into this because he was writing a book on it, right? You, you know, so he was really 
analyzing himself and his life and his his story and and his relationships and and whatever conclusions he must have come up with in the book, he must not have ultimately agreed with because. Correct. Uh, am I am I jumping to a conclusion? No, no, you know? be, I mean, no. Because I, here's the thing: is like we're used to this within our own crowd. Like uh, we would certainly say, "Your words don't mean anything to me. Your actions do." Yeah. Right. Like, and so, and, and, and we would, we would sharpen iron in this room easily with that statement. And so I, it's, that's just a flat out fact. What you yeah. care about, your actions will show, you mm-hmm. know, and what you believe your actions will bear out. And so, um, you can easily get tuned up by your own words, the words of somebody else. I mean, we, that's, that, that's what happens at youth conferences, <laughs> right? Like you get a, a, you get a sweet band and a whiz band speaker and you got a bunch of kids on fire for Jesus, you know, and, and maybe that spark will last three days. Maybe it'll last the rest of their life. It just depends, <laughs> you know, it right. depends if they reinvest and re and, and deepen and grow. And so like, the thing is, is like, I've had this conversation a couple times over the last couple months and it's a tough one because you, you really from the Christian perspective, hear me, people that follow Jesus, um, you have to pray on this. It's God's to do. It is not, it, it, it's, you're not a one man superhero in this deal and you don't get to pick the sins that you don't like and decide that you're going to champion against them. Uh, I, I think that's a mistake. You get to, you get to champion for people through the creator and go, God, this is yours. I have to lay it because it's a burden on your heart because it, as Ben said, you feel, you know, uh, from, from the truth of scripture that, some of the choices that they're making are not ultimately what's best for them because it's not ultimately what God has for them. And, and like, if you believe uh, that God, the creator would know more than Mike with a small amount of perspective, all I can say to God is, is like, I don't know what's going on, but this hurts my heart to watch. And I know I'm not handling it. Well, will you please show up and intercede? And like, he will. And, and, And maybe they say, no, maybe they're not interested, but like, it's God's to, it's God's to handle. God loves them more than you do. And, and, and you, you think like the Waymaker is such a great song, right? Because even if you don't see it, he's still working. He's trying. They can say no a thousand times and, and for the rest of their life. But I can guarantee God is still sending people. He doesn't run out of people. He doesn't run out of, of heart or love or, uh, or intent to bring every one of his children back to him. And so while it is difficult, while it is hard to watch, your reaction does not get to, you're not the justice part of this thing, right? God's got justice and mercy, uh, completely balanced out in a perfect way. You do not, you, you, you tend to read, I can almost guarantee it. Like we tend to land heavy on the justice. And then we like to reference God as if he's going to bring, he's going to be the dad when he comes home. You better wait till God finds out. He's going to be very disappointed. Mm -hmm. He will. He will be disappointed. That's biblically true. He will weep over that. He will be jealous for the affections that you're giving to other things. He will, he will seek after his jealousy doesn't equal though, like slashing tires and, 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 and writing things on your Facebook account. That's not his form of jealousy. His is, I want you back and I will get you and I will continue to send people and you will have to tell me no until you die. And that's God's jealousy. That is not our heart in this situation. And frankly, it's because we're afraid of it. Yeah. I- so I, again, I don't think I'm going to say this right, but I, I do want to, I think it's probably worth calling out what isn't, I don't think, I'm not sure it's quite the other side of the coin, but like, even if, even if the church finds, like if the church, the humans within a church, within a community can support someone, do does a great job of separating behavior and person, puts it in God's hands, prays faithfully. Um, the, the truth is, is that it is a very difficult life to know God, the father, to believe that he exists and to proclaim a life that is in, in, not in alignment with what he says and to live it that way. It is a terrible burden to carry. Um, and you will feel it. You will feel a disconnect between what God has designed you for um, and what, and, and things that he, and even if, even if you think like whatever you feel or your compulsions are, um, uh, cause again, I think you can throw out, um, you know, homosexuality as an example, like I, I, heterosexuality, sexual people have all kinds of compulsions. They can't, <laughs> they can't act on. Um, but like to the extent that you do, um, or that, and that, that starts to consume or identify your life and you, and you live kind of in this double world of, of, of what is recognition of true things, but then guilt for wrong things, but then no, not repenting from those things and then indulging those things and trying to walk in and out of it. Like I, I, the reason I bring it up is because I think the church can get this right 
and people themselves will wear the weight of not walking faithfully. And it will weigh on your mind and it will mess with how you look at the world. And it will be a burden that is too heavy for you to carry. And sometimes people will succumb to that weight because they refuse to give it to Jesus. Um, sometimes because they're, they too feel gu- too guilty too, as if it doesn't matter. Sometimes because they stopped believing it because it allowed them to do some of the stuff that they wanted. Um, sometimes they just can't con- in their mind, they cannot conceive of what it looks like to turn back and, and, and do something else. Um, and so I say that because I, st- I, I do think good news is still good news and it still rescues. And so like the notion of supporting people still means saying true things. It's just you say that because you love them. Mm-hmm. You say true things because we, 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 I don't have anything else. Like going back to our ability to, to say clever words. I don't have anything else that saves. I don't have anything else that rescues except for this good news. And where it applies to someone is a disservice to say it. I think what we're saying is that if you're going to say the things of God, the good news of God, you need to say it with the heart of God. That's what makes it true. Um, but if you were to do that, you could say, like, we well, we want to support you. We know you're struggling with this thing or other, and but we're not going to say true things. Like, those th- that disparity in someone, like, will weigh on them, and that can have a very, like, the same result, where they, it's too much for them to carry, and they end up not being able. Cause, like, again, this is, this is a good example of, what, of how things can be, is that, like, where... Um, where you felt like you were going to find freedom in declaring this thing about yourself, this thing you were hiding, like if this was the freedom card, what happened? It, because it's because it wasn't that, that wasn't the thing that really set you free is the thing you felt like you were hiding. And so like that, that's all, that's all I'm saying is that like, I think it is um, our, our goal isn't just to keep, oh, sorry, I don't have to say this right. Isn't just to make sure people persist in life. Like that can't be it. Cause like sometimes their lives will be torturous because they've, because people we're not saying true things to them. Um, and so it's just, it's both like, hey, this seems like a large burden on the church. Congratulations. It is. It's a large burden for you not to become King anywhere in this equation. It's a large burden for you to recognize the things that are out of your control and to, and to give them up to God and to pray on them faithfully because you love people. It's a large burden to love people. Who, who would turn around and tell the newspaper that you don't love them. It's a large burden to say true things, especially when people feel like the only thing, like they can't handle another true thing when it's the only thing they can handle if it's done well. And if it's done faithfully and lovingly, I think that's a large burden. Yeah, I agree. Dan, were you going to say something? Uh, no. Okay. I thought I heard a breath there. <laughs> don't breathe so close. <laughs> I thought you had wisdom. There's a breath of approval. All right. I, to be honest, I didn't know. Um, I uh, I don't know if we were supposed to talk about this t- tonight or not. I saw that article. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. There's like three big bucket things in here that we I know we don't spend a ton of time on. Um, but I don't know. I, I almost skipped it again, and, but I thought I'm just going to read it. And I had no particular thoughts about it going into it. It just I don't know. Yeah, I <clears throat> I think we uh, hmm. I, I, I think it falls into a bucket of humility things for most of Christianity. I, I, I think that, that you, we feel that like there's certain, there's certain big dollar sins, right? And, and this one's hard because it's, it's, it's an identity thing. I mean, the Bible's not agnostic to that. The Bible no. does actually think there are some big dollars. Uh, no, I, mm-hmm. I agree. And here, th- this one seems pernicious because you're identifying your, everything for who you are. That's right. Right. That's why it's hard. Right. Like they can say a lot of people can say, I do. I do love Jesus, but I struggle with this. That's not it's not my entire identity. I just I struggle with it. Right. Like I'm a, I'm a, I, I know who Jesus is, but I'm having a hard time putting this bottle down and it's taken me over. And I'm, I'm you know, but you don't say I'm an alcoholic and I'm proud. This is what I want to do. I want to mm-hmm. be an alcoholic my whole life. I want the whole world to know I'm an alcoholic and I want people to support my alcoholism. You're like, we're not we're not going to do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so like that, that this one becomes people feel personally attacked um, because of it, where if someone said, Hey man, you're an alcoholic. Yeah. It's going to make them mad, especially if it's true and no one, but, but they'll sit down later and go crap. Now everybody knows. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I feel it's like out. I, yeah, I, I hit got, that. Wrong. I got to do yeah. something. And, and, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't consider doubling down and saying, just support them in their alcoholism and let them be. Yeah. Because I won't do that. I, I was telling someone, we were having a conversation uh, last week with someone and, uh, uh, talking about, you know, the, the pride, you know, and the flags and, every, and, and all the companies and churches even doing the, you know, the, the, mm-hmm. the pride flags. 
And I think that, you know, I, I said, well, okay, when I was young, I, I was a thief. I, I stole a lot. Uh, I had a stealing club. You know, it was like, it was, I wasn't like casual. I, we were aggressive. How stealing. many people were in this club, Dan? Uh, there was two of us, but... Oh. How, how, <laughs> Okay. It, okay. it was hard to keep people. You had to steal something every day to stay in it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> From a store. <laughs> Dang. So we were, we were strict. But here's the thing. I never, I never expected people to put up the pirate flag and, and celebrate me. You, you know? Right. Uh, I, I'm not, at some point, I realized, wow, I was, I was being sinful, and I had to stop. And, and because someone was honest enough to tell me that. And I think, yeah, I think that's the, the difference it, it, is uh, people would push back quite a bit on me if I was expecting everyone to have pirate flags and pirate tattoos and, um, you know, saying, hey, we're all thieves and celebrate me. Um, that, that's that's the challenge. There. Well, yeah. And I think that's that's the that's the rub. Right. Like it would be weird. It's bad if I if I just showed up at a farm one day and snuck under a lady cow and started drinking from the udders, you'd be like, dude, that's not normal. That's not normal behavior. You're acting outside of how you're supposed to act. <laughs> but if, if I were a baby calf, it would be totally fine. Yeah. And so, like, the very notion of, um, you, of, of an individual being able to control the sense of their own identity, to manifest it in their own lives and say, I am what I am, it takes all of it, all of the, the, the reality of God's design out of the equation. That's the break, man. Mm-hmm. Whatever, whatever behavior follows that is a natural consequence. Like if, once I start, once I start saying I'm a baby calf, then I can crap in the field, right? Then I can, there's all kinds of stuff I could do that would be odd if I was a human. And like, this is an extreme example. Don't yeah, yeah. keep your text messages to yourself. It's, don't look far too far into my example, but like the point is, is that like once you get, once you you shift away from here's the identity that God has created and said was good and is me and is loved and is rescued um, and that kind of thing and become something you you wholly define on your own, um, that's when the break happened. Everything else that follows is not surprising at all, um, and it's and frankly it makes logical sense. Because again, go back to the the example that Dan gave. Um, if you if 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 the definition of who you are comes from you, and you say I am this person, and previously I felt like I had to hide it, and now I get to live free from that. Is that something you're proud of? Sure. And would you put a flag out? Sure, because you don't you don't look at it the same way people would look at the, at a pirate or a thief. Like, cause, cause you changed the definition of the thing. And now it's just, just, just like if someone were to say, look, are you a Christian? Yeah. Would you be willing to put a flag out? Sure. Sure. I'm glad people to know. Great. Like that's where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. And so like, that's not the break. The break happened when we said, God does not have a say in my life to speak this thing. He, it's not, it's, it's not his opinion that I care about. I, I, I'm going with my own thoughts on the matter. And if that's not a red flag, boys, I don't know how many times I've made a mistake when going, you know, I'm going with my own thoughts on the yeah, matter. That's right. the entire Bible. The yeah. entire Bible is full of people who said, I'm going to go with my own thoughts on this thing. Yeah. Hey, man, and, I, f- I felt so alive when I was in a store taking stuff. I mean, the adrenaline's flowing. It was exciting. I felt alive. Right, 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 right. You know, I, I never felt more like me than when I was doing that. Right. But it was a lie. The break was a misunderstanding, right? Like, yeah. that is not who you are. Right. Yeah, but you felt invigorated, and you got yeah, yeah, and so like the, I, this is where I think we we do have to be like we got to be honest. We got to be honest about this thing. If you take away the notion of whether God is who He says He is, and He's designed people and and the world to work in the way that He says it, and the Bible accurately represents it, then none of this stuff is crazy. It's not. It's not even. It's it's it doesn't lack logic. There's plenty of things that lack logic, but like these types of things, like I, they don't lack logic to me. If you mm-hmm. if I accept premise number one, everything else follows just fine, just fine. The guy won't make the cake. You're like, why? It's just humans. Why won't you just bake a cake? Because we just we just change the start of the conversation, and then it changes, and it's and so like it's not illogical if you accept the first break. But that's that's where the rub is. That's what I'm praying at. I'm praying at that. Hey man, could you? Can you help me and can you help this dude over here and this lady over here to, to, to recognize that you are who you say you are? You are there. You are who you say you are and that what you say has to be good. And if we can, if all three of those things are true, then the conversation has to completely change. If you don't believe any of those, like, like all of those are true, um, then, then every other outcome has a, has a chance of being logically correct. 
and making sense in how people think. If all you have is yourself, then you might as well celebrate that self. Like I would celebrate God. I would say God is good. God deserves praise. If you take the God, if you take God out of someone's life, who's calling all the shots? I am. Am I to be celebrated? Well, yeah. I'm the one who comes up with the definition. I'm the one who, who, who gets to say who I am. I'm the one who gets to trumpet it and, and show it off to the world. Now, I think, and this is kind of what I was getting at earlier, is that, like, I think in our heart of hearts, everybody knows that you are not that. I can't imagine there really is a person who goes, you know, who knows everything, who's got this total world figured out, who always feels consistent. And like the things that I say match my inner person. And like, I don't ever wonder, like, is there a moral good beyond what I just thought of in my mind? I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. And I think that's the, that's the thing where like, there's, there's a lot of folks within the, um, I'm going to miss the letters, the LGBTQIA um, communities where they don't ever find the peace that they were looking for in the declaration. Um, and, and, and I think their general conclusion would be, well, it's because society still hasn't accepted what I said was true. And, and I, I just, I'm going to beg you to, to consider that it might just be that the peace that you are grabbing for can't be found within yourself. And it can't be found within what you feel like it can only be found within the, tr- within the reality, the true living God who, who has designed you and have given you an identity and like, Hey man, I'm with you. I, like, I, I, it's, it's not that bucket of stuff, but like, I've certainly felt a disconnect between God and I, and I'm not super impressed with the, the, the what it looks like for me to run my own affairs. What was the phrase I just used? It was great. I'm going to take, I'm going to. Nope. I, I forget it. Nope. Hmm. Whatever. It was a guy who takes his own counsel. <laughs> uh, and so, like, like I, I, I was the phrase I used. It was great. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. It really sailed. It was fantastic. It was, it was tweetable and everything if we use the Twitter. Um, anyway, the, the, the broad point was is that, like, I just, I mean, whatever. We're going to end up in a deep trench talking about uh, uh, homosexuality and suicide and church. But that's what their story was about. But like, I, I think the point was is that, like, there's, there's one or two ways in which some of those things can go. And I, I'm just... I want, I want to, to make sure that we're cautious that that, that, it, that is not the conclusion only because folks didn't feel like they received the support that they wanted from themselves. Sometimes they come to that, like that feeling doesn't ever go away because the trajectory actually isn't right. It's not true. It's, it's taking you farther away from the, from the reality of God and who he is and what he, who, what he wants uh, in a relationship with you and what that means for what you get to be. And I, I, I think if you, um, there's, there's some things that you believe that are true that don't have to be right. Like not everybody has to, has to go through a struggle every day. Not everybody like, like there's a life to be lived that God offers that like you don't think is possible right now. You know, you feel like, like everybody has to go through this or everybody has this, uh, this thing that weighs them down and it's a constant struggle and blah, 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 like, it's it's not the populace, right? Like you got the populace. We're we're the minority here, right? Like the the, the Jesus folks are are in the minority. But I'm telling you, there's 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 a life that God is offering that is not filled with all the stuff that you that you're currently going through that you think has to stay, right? You're just you're convinced that everybody has a common life thread, which is, uh, you know, we go through this thing, or I'm I'm super bummed out, or I'm super worried all the time, or I'm super stressed. It's not like that. Like we're not hum- humanity. Christians go through the same thing, right? We just we just route it different. All that stuff lands on people who don't follow uh, follow Jesus. All that stuff lands on you. Uh, for us, all that stuff lands on Him. If we're doing it right, <laughs> right? Yeah. We're turning it around and shoving it back up and going, God's your world, your people. What's going on around here? <laughs> I want an explanation. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why things are going so foul. And sometimes it goes, Son, I'll, I'll give you an explanation. Sometimes He says, If I told you, uh, you would act a complete fool. And so I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> and and that's a loving move. And I and and you know we get to trust that. And maybe it seems lame or like a easy out, but like it's it's, it's the world God created for us. Right. Like he knew that once the world was broken, we couldn't, there's certain things we weren't going to be able to handle on our own. We weren't built for it. Right. We were built to be in community with God. He was built to walk the garden with us and say, how's the day? Sons and daughters, I'm here to check up on us, make sure everything's going okay. Plants are growing good. I told him <laughs> that's what I wanted, you know, and we were built for that. And then we cracked it. And then, and then that, that community with the creator wasn't there by our choice. And, 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 and all of humanity will continue to make the same choice. And, 
And so I, I guess what I'm getting at is like, it's so hard to believe that someone that believes the complete opposite thing than you can actually love you and see you for what, for what you are, because you actually look the exact same as me. You're the exact same broken. You're the exact same fooled. You're the exact same, except for, I know that like I am broken and I am fooled and I'm, I, and that does happen to me. And so I have a creator that I go to and say, look, I, 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 I trust you with this thing. And if you say it's not the right move, I, I don't agree right now, but I want you to change my heart. So I do agree. Cause I think you got this. Well, actually that, that's a really good point. And maybe we'll, we'll leave with this mm-hmm. is that, um, we, we just, we just have to be very careful on, on defining whether someone loves me on whether they affirm my behavior or not. Correct. Because the, the, think of it at its core, at its core, the biblical message is I will not affirm your behavior. <laughs> I can't. I will die so that it can be rescued. I can. Die. I will sacrifice my own life that it could be set right, but I will not affirm it. Mm-hmm. That isn't the notion of love. And so, like, some of us, I think, are in a trap that says, um, I will know that people love me when they support me in my behavior. And, and you got to chuck it. Yeah. I mean, that's true in any relationship. Yes. My, my wife loves me, but there's a lot of behavior of mine that she does not affirm. That's right. I mean, that's just... That's right. You know? And she lets me know. Yeah. Dan, you shouldn't fill out that, that who hot punch card this fast. Man. I do not affirm that. <laughs> yeah. I got a rough life. I come here a lot. I got it memorized. <laughs> I smell like garlic. She knows. <laughs> it's the first time I had the occasion to spell my name. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I, I like, and that goes that just know that like, if you look at the, maybe you're struggling right now and you look at the church and you say, look, they're just not supporting me. I cannot find the support among my family, among my friends, among my church, among whoever they're not supporting me. And I want, I want you to ask yourself by support, do you mean affirming your life choices? B- because that's not the same. That's not the same as supporting you. That's not the same as loving you. Loving people don't go, hey, yeah, you're going to jump off that cliff? Sure, I'm with you. Make it a good one. Like, that's wrong. And we're not going to do that. Yeah, I, I, but here's the thing. is like the thing that he said, we're like, I hang around with people who expect you to live up to impossible, um, what did he say exactly? Like, uh, they're impossible standards. Standards that you can't possibly live up to. Uh, yes. Is that your experience? Like, I, I guess, for fellows in the room, like... Do you like, does that occur to you often where you look around and go, this is impossible. I cannot keep these standards. No, no. I don't ever think about that. I say yes. You do, Dan? I I mean, that's the whole point. That's the whole point of the laws. We can't do it. No, I mean, I know you have to have the balance of understanding of grace. No, I know it's true. I know it's true, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, do you, does that hit you hard and weigh you down? No. No. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I like, thank God for grace. Okay. That's okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That, that, that was the whole point is that like, I think it's what is, that's a reality. And to Dan's point, like, I think we have to know that we recognize what the, what, what it means to miss the mark to sin. Yeah. But like, um, I, I, I just cannot think of a time in, in my, in my life as a, as a Christian where I'm like, boy, these are impossible these are impossible because at the same time, I know very well that Christ has died to pay for the impossible. Like, like I didn't forget that in that moment. So when people say, are we going to call you to this higher thing? Well, sure. I would expect you to, but then when I fall short, I don't, I guess I just has not weighed upon me in the way that it feels like it's weighing for, or had for this fella um, to say, boy, you're calling to something that's impossible. Yes, I know. But the grace was part of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, what's God actually asking out of humanity? Yeah. What God really asks for is, you are God, I am not. I need you. Yeah. I can't I've, I, I. can't be around. I can't measure up. I can't the cover all the heart. bases. I can't There's try no hard enough. I can't succeed on this on my own. Like, honestly, that is what God, that is what God is, that's all God is asking. Mm-hmm. And he did all the legwork. Right, like he sent his son to die for us on a on a price that we couldn't pay, and he says, "All I need you to do is acknowledge the situation you're in, which is I am a perfect God. I, I created you. I know you. I gave you identity. I gave you I gave you citizenship in my kingdom. I gave you high standing. I have tons of rooms. I love you. I'm planning parties for eternity. I want you to be with me. But realize that in your current state, you actually can't come in here." Because this is, uh, this, is, this is my kingdom, and my kingdom runs the way that I designed it. And so to pay for you to get in, I will send the representative from my kingdom, my son, to die for you, to let you in the party. All you have to do is acknowledge is that that's what happened. 
is that you can't come in on your own, that you come in because I allowed you to be in and that you say, God, your ways are not my ways. And I want to follow them. I want to do the thing that you want me to do. And like, it's, it's not all complicated. It really is just understanding the relationship between God and humanity. That's what he's asking. And where you and God disagree, you go, I'm struggling because I don't see it right now, but I'm going to trust that you got it. That's what he's asking. And so it's not a list of unrealistic expectations or, or rule after rule after rule after rule. You'll get them. And the reason we have the rules, the reason we have the law is for you to understand the God that you're dealing with, mm-hmm. to understand God's character. It's a gift, man. It, it really is a gift because there's some things where you're like, I don't know where God would stand on this. He's, he's spoken to it. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's covered a general principle, right? Inside of his word. So you understand what God's heart is. Well, and, right. Because short of that, you really are just in a tussle with some other dude who goes, you know what I think is right? This thing. And yeah. then you think to yourself, you know what I think is right, this thing. And you have a terrible bias in the matter. Right. And how do governments fix that? We either vote by a majority rules, right, or we get ourselves a dictator who don't ask nobody. <laughs> that's pretty much the two options, right? We, get, we either get a guy that sees the ultimate authority because he's in charge, or we try it by a group and say, who thinks the most of this? Like, what percentage think this is right? What is wrong? We'll take a vote. And wherever we come out with, that's the deal. Right. That's not ultimate right and wrong. That's just how many people you can convince Believe the That's thing right. And just under that, the amount who said yes is, a, is a, a strong group of people who are hosed off until we talk about it again next time. Correct. And so, like, uh, and so we say, well, I don't want God to tell me what to do. Well, my goodness, why not? <laughs> like, what, why wouldn't you? I, I'm for it. I'm for whatever keeps me from acting a fool. I don't believe he's going to lead me into happiness and joy, and, which means flat out you just don't believe his promise because that's what he is promising. He is promising to lead you into joy and peace. And you know what's funny is like I I, I have talked to people who are like uh, who who don't believe that, but they do believe in a God. And I'm like, in concept, like I just don't know what you're like if there was if you believe that this God is true and real. I I, one, I don't understand why you believe that and you don't believe the underlying promises like that. That doesn't make sense because like you're you're same basic references and resources that are affirming these types of things. Um but then secondly, like, let's say your God was like a jerk. Like there was a true God and he was a jerk. Like I'm, you still don't really have much of a choice. Right, I don't want right? to hang, well, I mean, <laughs> hang out eternity with a God that's a jerk. Right. And God don't want you there if you don't want to be there. That's, that's what the choice actually boils down to. What it boils down to is God says, I have, I, I created everything. This is the way that I created things to work. Would you like to join me? That's it. That's it. Would you like to come with me? And you go, sure, but I want this and this and this and this changed. God goes, eh, that's not. Here's the thing, because he knows that can't sustain. We're not right. talking about living your meager 100 years or 89 years or whatever you pull off on this earth. We're talking about eternity for the rest of all days. Why would you say it with a heightened E? Like it's a website. What? Like eternity. Uh, E-ternity? You don't say it like that? Eternity. You say it with a eternity? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, eternity. Nathaniel, you say it right. Eternity. Hey, you're not talking like we're talking about homosexuals and suicide in the church, and you really haven't said anything. <laughs> That's true. I just feel like I'm. Uh, uh, you, you guys were saying a lot of things, and uh, I can't get a word in edgewise around here. <laughs> That's probably right. That's yeah. probably right. Nathaniel also wants to stay employed at whatever his place of business is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think that's all. This maybe my 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 broad point is is there's some very heavy stuff in here, but like this is this is regular brokenness. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. I I think where the church goes foul is we like to to pump up the the water balloon gun with certain it's a celebrity things. brokenness. We that, try to do celebrity brokenness. Correct. And acting like it's not the same brokenness that you got. It's the same brokenness that you got. It takes a different form. Somebody believed a lie. We always say this, like somewhere down the road, somebody believed a lie somewhere. Someone said, "What God says about me is not true." He doesn't lo- he didn't he didn't make me. He didn't create me. He doesn't have a plan for me. He doesn't love me. He's not going to guide me. He's not he doesn't have joy in my future. He doesn't have all the fruits of the spirit that God promises. I don't believe any of that. And so right there when you believe that lie, then you're like, I guess I'm on my own and I'm going to start trying to find ways to make these things for myself. And I, I mean, if you're just talking to people on a human level, are you telling me you don't understand that? You tell me you don't get that, that like that thought process makes perfect sense. If you don't believe that God will do all these things, then you're going to try to start making things, make ways for your own, get your own path going, cut your own trail. And this is what I'm going to do. And it's homesteading. It, it's it, homesteading for the spirit, for the soul. Correct. And so like on, on the opposite of that, like if as a person who knows Jesus, I say, look, I, I understand how you got there. Like this is true with just about every sinful path or sinful thing I've ever done. I know how I got there. 
And the truth is, I just didn't believe God and his promises. But I've watched his promises come to fruition. I've watched him turn lives around. Lives that you thought were so far gone that they didn't even have a shot. And like, God's, God's promises are good. And I know that because I've seen it. And you just haven't. That's all. That's all we're talking about here. And so if we can take the amp gun down... And, 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 and just stop rolling in there as if we are the holy representative of God's justice. That is not our play. Truth is, certainly God's truth. That's our play, because that's the only thing that saves. Ben nailed that. Of course, that's the only thing that saves people, is the truth of what God has done. Thank you. And if I you, felt strongly about it. <laughs> and, if, and here's the thing. Uh, as a Christian, when you decide to bail on that, um, that's a millstone deal. That's a problem. That's a real big deal, because you're leading people astray now. You're taking what God said was true, and you're bending it a little bit because you think it might be taken in better. It's not your game. Prayer is your game. You yeah. pray how they take it in. It, it, sometimes we're, we're much more subtle than, than just like an outright rejection of God. I had, I had a guy call me this week. He goes, hey, we, we talked about pornography a couple, three years ago, whatever it was. And he said, okay, so I, I've really stopped. I, I, don't, I don't look at pornography anymore. I said, well, that's, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. He goes, but I have this thing. He says, I, I get all these premium channels, and if I see a movie that looks like there might be nudity mm-hmm. in it, I'll like I'll make sure and watch it. What do you think God thinks of that? I'm like, wow. <laughs> he's, yeah. I mean, he's like intentionally trying to find a movie to accidentally find naked people, right? right. You know, uh, I, I mean, like both. He started with a good spot, like a contrite heart. He, like he, he honestly wants to serve God, right? And he, and, but he's, he he struggles. Yeah. And I'm like, it was a, yeah, no, it was an interesting conversation. I mean, it's it's. I, I, I'm just saying it's that's down a few notches of what we're talking about, right. but, but it just shows we're all we're all there. You know? Right, we're, we're all. Uh, so, so can he live up to the expectations of, of that the church was throwing on him? No, 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 he can't. No, that, no. that's why I guess what I was thinking of earlier. It's like, of yeah. course not. Right, we, we can't. We can't hit perfection. Um, and and so you know, it's like I. It, Kind of encouraged him to maybe try to look at other things, <laughs> you know, if that's a struggle. Maybe maybe don't get those channels, like yeah. we say at right. Ben's house. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there was a time I I don't have any of them for that for that reason because right. I, I, I I could relate to him. I probably did that. You know, I don't whenever how many years ago I had that stuff. I would I would kind of go. That was back when you get a little magazine, you right? Know, and it'd tell you what the the show is worth a month. Like, ooh, look at that. Yeah. I that might just seductive. accidentally watch that. That's yeah. right. Like what? Really? Some cheap little thrill of, of you know uh, the side of someone's breast or something like Woo-hoo, that got me. You know, I mean, but it's you know it's 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 a hard pull. Yeah, it's a it hard is. pull. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nathaniel, did you, did you need to get a word in edgewise? <laughs> no, I don't. I think he was making that up, Mike. Then he had a word actually yeah. to say. Yeah, I think he just wanted a clever bar, but you. Is that what you did? I think he's implying that you overspeak. That's what I'm, that's what I, what I think. No, sure? I think I probably underspeak. Is well, honestly, but also I uh, things like this. Like I f- sometimes I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Sometimes I forget there are homosexuals out there, right? In the world, and then I go to work and I'm walking on this rainbow path, and I go, oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I think, I'm be honest. Like I'm not sure what you guys thought he was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think he was going to say, I forget there's homosexuals out there. <laughs> that, that just didn't even cross my mind. It's something you were going to say. The, the rainbow path kind of got me going. I, I was picturing like little flowers falling from the sky, too. I, 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 I mean, there's a path, though. There. It's, it's, uh, it's rainbows of, of duct tape. Yeah. Oh, someone has gone and set this up. Yeah. Okay. And okay. there's meetings and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And I just like forget. like it, it, After I leave, it just it, uh, never enters my mind. Yeah. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Maybe I should spend more time in prayer on it. I don't know how to help Nathaniel. <laughs> hey, you've been listening to Life from the Path. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you the complaint line, but I want you to use it responsibly. Because uh, uh, I'm sure there's all kinds of things in here you may or may not find offensive. There's probably some word choices where you feel like we could have done better. Uh, I want you to call the complaint line, and I want you to, to or send us a text message only if you've prayed before you sent, sent it to us. All right? Like, a no joke. I'm glad to learn and hear from anything that, that you have to say or feedback that we have. But I need you to take this conversation in in the way that we intend it. Uh, I think I prefaced a couple different times. I'm not going to get the words right. So if you got any critiques about some of our words, I want you to let it go. Um, uh, again, we're, we're, we're willing to be sharpened here. Um, but I just, I like, I, I've seen these types of... You put the three things we just talked about in one bucket and you shake it up like... Uh, t- 10 people out of 15 are going to die in the discussion. All right. I don't want to do that over our, over our complaint line. 
All right? But I, we do want to learn from you. So I just want you to think about it, pray about it. We're totally, we're open to being wrong on any given item. As long as God's right, we're okay to be wrong. Um, so the complaint line, if you need to use it, is 515-517-0085. That's call or text 515-517-0085. All right. Here's the jokes. And another thing. And then, Mike, you got to tell you got to tell us about the Rise Fest, and then okay. we got to do some advice. Okay, because the day the day grows long. Got it. Okay. I didn't read this one ahead of time. Let's see what happens. One, one summer evening during a violent thunderstorm, a mother was tucking her small boy into bed. She was about to turn off the light when he asked, with a tremor in his voice, "Mommy, will you sleep with me tonight?" The mother smiled and gave him a reassuring hug. "I can't, dear," she said. "I have to sleep with Daddy." A long silence was broken at last by a shaky little voice. The big sissy. <laughs> Does that count as a joke? The dad's a pansy, Mike. No, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, hold on. There's a couple other options. Hey, man. Dan really liked it, though. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me angry. <laughs> Just thinking that someone typed that in and thought, <laughs> this will get him. <laughs> this is the greatest. <laughs> a four-year-old boy was eating an apple in the back seat of the car when he asked, Daddy, why is my apple turning brown? Because, his dad explained, after you ate the skin off, the meat of the apple came into contact with the air, which has caused, caused it to oxidize, thus changing the molecular structure and turning it into a different color. There was a long silence. Then the son asked softly, Daddy, are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, the father jokes just really aren't. They're, oh, oh, boy. Okay, here we go. I, I, I just, that, that, that was... Uh, Every one of your children, Ben. Okay, hold on. I did this exact. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I did. This, I did this exact same thing, right? So, so, uh, Pant sends me a question. It says, "What happens when you eat aluminum foil?" I say, "I think it's galvanic shock if you have fillings or dental work. If you don't, you won't notice it." Thinking it's a legit question, and he goes, yeah. "You sheet metal." <laughs> <laughs> I always tell the joke. <laughs> and I had Johnny seriously answer it. And I'm like, take your pants. <laughs> and I was like, hey, my friend Mike has wisdom in the shock or whatever. And I'm like, I'll tell you the answer, pants. I love you. Here's the thing. And he's like, ah. <laughs> I totally. That I got, speaks to your pompacity. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, yeah. I felt like such a fool. Someone's petitioned me as an expert, but they're setting you up for yeah, a gag. Pants is like laughing at me at his house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Four expectant fathers were in Minneapolis. Wait, hospital waiting room while their wives were in labor. The nurse arrived and announced to the first man, Congratulations, sir. You're the father of twins. What a coincidence, the man said with some obvious pride. I work for the Minnesota Twins baseball team. The nurse returned a little while and turned to the second man. You, sir, are the father of triplets. Wow, that's really an incredible coincidence, he answered. I work for the 3M Corporation. My buddies at work will never let me live this one down. I'm sure. An hour later, while the other two men were passing cigars around, the nurse came back. This time, she turned to the third man, who had been quiet in the corner. She announced that his wife had just given birth to quadruplets. Stunned, he barely could reply. Don't tell me another coincidence, asked the nurse. After finally regaining his composure, he said, I don't believe it. I work for the Four Seasons Hotel. After hearing this, everybody's attention turned to the fourth guy, who had just fainted flat out on the floor. The nurse rushed to his side, and after some time, he slowly gained back his consciousness. When he was finally able to speak, you could hear him whispering repeatedly the same phrase over and over again. I should have never taken that job at 7-Up. I should have never taken that job at 7-Up. He's going to have seven kids, Mike. I saw that one coming. Nathaniel hates that one. <laughs> okay. These are bad jokes. These are only, there were only four dad jokes. Here's the last one. After tucking their three-year-old child Sammy in for bed one night, his parents heard sobbing coming from his room. Rushing back in, they found him crying hysterically. He managed to tell them he had swallowed a penny, and he was sure he was going to die. No amount of talking was helping. His father, in an attempt to calm him down, palmed a penny from his pocket and pretended to pull it from Sammy's ear. Sammy was delighted. In a flash, he snatched it from his father's hand, swallowed, and then cheerfully demanded, Do it again, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> that one got me a giggle. <laughs> I was not really a joke, though. It's just, you know, yeah. the kid thinks he makes magic pennies out of his ear when he eats them. <laughs> okay. Those are rough. Hey, you don't like those jokes? I don't care. That's not complete line material. Go to the Jokes Christians Unite. Uh, it's it's not a good site. Okay, so I went to the I went to a Christian music festival over the weekend. Who was playing at the Rise Fest? Mike? Oh boy. Okay, so uh, let's see. I mean, there's there's the the opening day fillers, which I I, I, I won't, I'm not going to remember. Yeah. Um, but uh, the first day, We the Kingdom played. Uh-huh. Uh, they were really good. Uh, and then they were followed by Big Daddy Weave mm-hmm. was there. Mm-hmm. And then the closer for that night was uh, Casting Crowns. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and Mark Hall, uh, still great, the lead singer of Casting Crowns. Is, I mean, 
Uh, you don't realize how many songs Cast and Crowns have put out until you go to one of their shows and you know all of them. Where I, I mean, a Christian music festival is kind of tough, especially for up and coming artists. You're lucky. I mean, they play for like in a little bit over an hour, and they're going to play ten songs. You're going to one. You know, especially for like like I didn't know a ton of songs by We the Kingdom. I know quite a bit more now, and they were pretty good. Um, but like, and then Casting Crowns takes the stage, and you know every single one they play. Yeah. And like he said a couple things that that I almost interjected into our our uh, our stuff tonight. But like uh, he said it twice during the concert, and he closed with it. He goes, "Just remember, you're not the point. We point to the point." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah, okay." All right, that's a takeaway. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I've, I've actually been thinking about it a, a couple times. So, so um, th- those were really good. And then the second day um, was uh, Zach Williams was there. And then the closer was... Uh, Ch- Chainbreaker. He's a Chainbreaker man. Yeah, Chainbreaker. He's, he's actually has quite a, quite a, a few... Um, a repertoire, really, really yeah, it, it, yeah, really good tunes. Um, Nathaniel, what's his favorite that they don't play that they don't play on the radio? What's your favorite? Of what? Of, of the Zach Williams songs that don't make the radio airplay. I don't know Zach Williams. Tell me, at tell all. me, which one of the deep cuts do you love? You don't, you don't, you don't know any Zach Williams cuts. Of all the people you've mentioned so far, I know Big Daddy Weave and I know Casting Crowns. You don't know any tunes by We the Kingdom. Uh-uh. Uh, but man, they hey, just... name some more bands so we can shame Nathaniel. Okay. Uh, well, the the closer on the second night was Matthew West. And he was great. Everybody knows Matt West. Yeah. Matthew West. He, I mean, you know every song that he's ever put out. You just don't think you know it. Grace wins every time. You with me on that one? Can you hum a few bars? No. Truth be told? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know either of those two either. Are you serious? I, I, don't, I don't get those channels. All right. I'm going to start sharing playlists with you fellas. Now, listen. There's a broad swath of Christian radio that I just cannot dig on. Uh, which actually, those are the dudes that take up like the 12 to like 3 o'clock slot. Uh, like, I just, I don't know. It's all super flowy, you, you know, and kind of wispy. And they got like a synthesizer running all the time. And I just, I, it's not for me. I, I, I don't dig on you. If you worship that way, I think that's great. However, you connect with Jesus, I'd, I, I'd go right down that road. But like this wispy, never ending tune, I, it's just, it's, I don't dig on it. Um, but like uh, Matthew West, he write, he's got all the hits. And here's the thing. The second day, I, I volunteered because you get a free ticket. So I volunteered to be on the stage crew yeah. to help set the place up. Told me to be there at 730 or at uh, 7 o'clock. I got there at 645. I was pumped. I'm like, I'm here to help. It, nobody else got there until 730, so I sat around doing nothing. <laughs> and it turns out they were slightly overstaffed. And so I sat around doing nothing and, because I, they had too many people. And all, everybody else had done it before. And so they kind of knew where the stage props went. And, and they're like, take this to stage left or front of house or, or the second. Take this to monitor land. And I'm like, where's monitor land? I can't tug anything around. And so... Uh, finally, I, I get my own wheelhouse, right? Like, so my background is I'm an electrician, and I used to play in a band. I can hook up some cables, yeah. and so I start stringing cables out, and I start go. I, I go to plug one in. It's got like a 50 pin microphone cable, and I'm getting ready to plug it in, and some dude comes out of no, nowhere. He's like, "Don't do that." I'm like, "Why? What happened?" I said, "Does it not go here?" And he goes, "It goes there. It's very expensive. I don't want you to break it." I'm like, "Oh," and and then I thought, "I'm not the point." We point to the point. I wanted Mike to be a big deal, and so it was all known by the Matthew West setup crew that I certainly knew how to run right. my cables. And so I had to let that go. <laughs> my pride had to go on the back burner. Uh, and then Matthew West comes out to do the sound check in, like, uh, uh, shorts and regular dude wear. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, he's pretty cool. You know? Like, so I, I mean, I, I thought, I, t- I told the girls before I left, I'm like, honestly, if I run into him, he's probably going to say something like, you're Mike from Life from the Path. And I thought he would mention that. Yeah, and he's yeah. going to bring it up. Sure, it slipped his mind. He must have had some other thoughts going on. It's the first uh, big concert out of, since COVID, you know, and the festival. And like, uh, there was I don't know how, what the count was. Thousands of people here. So here's anyway. Here's my positive takeaways. Here's what I really liked. Okay, one, it's a great reminder um, to me and to my kids that we serve a very big God. Like you are not in this on your own. You're not by yourself. There's like five thousand people here. Like worshiping, praying, uh, you know, just just raising hands and, and having a great time uh, singing about Jesus. And no one on stage ever let that go, right? No one, it never felt like anybody was like, you know, dig my new CD or whatever. Like everybody had, had uh, everybody did what we recommend to grow churches. We were, I just listened to our show from a, a month ago because it's the only podcast available. And uh, we were talking about uh, church growth, right? The seven things of old that would work for new church uh, growth. Yeah. And the thing that we always landed on was like... Um, 
you don't need fancy gospel. You just need your story. You need what God did. How you know? How do you know God? Why do you trust Him? Right? Like just straightforward things. And uh, none of the artists got on stage and let that go. Everybody, everybody said how they met Jesus and 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 why they're still here and what they're doing with their life. So that part was very cool. And then my kids, we go to a relatively small church and we live in a relatively small town. And like uh, sometimes uh, around their friends or at school, you feel like you're the only guy that actually believes this thing. Uh, sometimes you can relate if you work somewhere where you're like, I think I'm legit the only Jesus person here, you know, but then you go to this, you go to this festival and there's like five, 10,000 people here that all love Jesus. You're not on your own on this thing, right? Like you're, you've not been fooled. You're not in the middle of a cult here, right? Like you believe a thing and God's doing work all over the places. So that was, that part was very, very cool. Um, getting to see my kids worship was, uh, awesome. Uh, getting past my own hangups, uh, of, of, of normally I play in the worship band and instead, like I just got to sing and close my eyes and then I find my hands going up, which I really find very uncomfortable. Uh, but like I, I got to do that and that was, that was very, very fun. Um, the festival itself was, was cool. I haven't been to one in a really long time and Christian music festivals are great because they don't just plow like one headliner in there. You'll get at least six full name acts because they're cheap, <laughs> right? Like yeah. uh, standard rock festival or whatever. I mean, these guys are wanting $100,000 just to show up. And uh, Jesus people, we we travel on the dime. <laughs> Matthew West can't even afford pants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was very cool. Um, some of the things, like, I, it, it was still turned out pretty good, but, like, some of the uh, political stuff kind of showed up a little bit. And, like, like, one of their major sponsors had, like, a 15-minute video on how they – been working to get the right people in power and, and this and this. And they kept showing pictures of like these certain leaders or whatever. And, and, and like, my, and, and, and my, my daughter looks at me and she goes, dad, I think they missed the mark a little bit on, on the message they're trying to convey. And I'm like, I think you're right, hon. I think they did. I think they did. I think they got, I, I, I have no problem uh, with uh, God's people having uh, what's good in mind for our country and having views on that. I think that's good and healthy and that's part of the country we live in. Um, but I think when you try to marry the two up as if they come as one solid package, uh, you're fooling yourself and you're not doing any, you're not doing any good. And I, so let me ask you this question. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've, uh, I've, I stopped putting my hand over my heart when they do the Pledge of Allegiance or the, uh, the Star Spangled Banner. Why? I don't know. Like it felt like, um, uh, like I still stand. Because we, we, they do it at the kids' softball games and stuff. Um, it, 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 they just got to a point where I, it felt like I was um, – uh, the level of connection that I was being asked to make to the concept of my country took, was at a level that I wouldn't give anything but God. Is, that, is this wrong? Am I thinking about this wrong? Am I doing the wrong thing? I mean, you're not saying I pledge allegiance to the flag only. No, I know. Or, or above. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's just a, uh, uh, hey, what a what a great privilege to live here. I mean, you've mm. been to other places. You've seen what it's like. It's like, this is a pretty cool place. Yeah. Rend to Caesar, what is Caesar's? And Caesar wants a hand over the heart when we sing the tunes. Seems all right. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I don't find it to be a problem. Okay. Yeah. You should let that go, Ben. I'm, a, I'm, not st- I'm probably going to keep not doing it. Okay. Second thing that happens at Christian concerts, which I, which it could be, you either love this or don't like it, but like uh, standard rock concerts don't put the words up on the screen for you to sing along with. <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> You're yeah. just expected to take in the performance. Jesus, people don't dig on that. And so the downside is, is like they have this really big stage and then that they just built. And then right in front of that, like 50 feet is the front of house mixer board. The guy that's in charge of doing the sound for everybody. So he covers the best spot of the house, you know, in an outdoor stage. So to make up for that, just to the left, they put up this giant screen and so like i'm watching casting crowns and i'm watching uh, matthew west and everybody's looking at the screen because they got cameras and they get a much closer view and it's a better shot you know but i'm like the guy is well right there he's right in front of me he's like 30 40 feet away you know he's not as big as he is on the i can't see each individual droplet of sweat like i can if i looked at the video but like i mean the dude's right here <laughs> you know and then half the crowd's like filming the whole thing with their phone i'm like that parts of that just that's just my personality. It irritates the crap out of me. Yeah. I'm like, you're missing being in the moment. Yeah. You know, you miss the whole thing trying to get a video of it later on your crappy phone. I mean, yeah, they put three three cameras on your latest iteration of the iPhone or the Samsung or whatever you got. But like, ain't gonna make up for the fact that you literally thirty feet away from Matthew West, you know, and he's talking to you, telling stories about his wife and his kids, and you know, being being super cool, you know, and and you missed it because <laughs> you wanted to look at his big TV and then record him with your phone. So uh, that that part was was uh, unfortunate, but overall, um, it was nice to get out. It was awesome uh, to worship with other people uh, in a big crowd, and um, I don't know. There's there's a sense of community 
that um, as much as we push for the small community, um, God does give opportunities for, you know, his people to get together and celebrate um, as, as, as a whole, as a collective. And it's, it's, it's cool to be a part of. You're not worried about your voice standing out. You're not worried about, you know, uh, it being about you. You're not the point. We point to the point. And so, um, yeah, uh, overall it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, my kids had a good time. I had a great time. Um, I thought, I thought it was pretty awesome. I, I could probably only go to one a year. I think I, 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 the, the festival stuff, I mean, it's like 95 degrees outside and you spend way too much money on food because they kind of got you trapped. Um, but other than that, it was it was a very cool experience, and uh, my kids really had a good time. So I, I think we'll definitely do it. We were talking about going again next year. Was yeah. there anything uh, like that they're coming out of COVID or whatever? Um, did you notice anything, any restrictions or like a lot of freedom or what, anything? Uh, yeah, yeah. No one made any mention of it except for all the artists because they haven't been traveling for like a year. You know, like they canceled 27 shows last year. And so like they were so thankful to be out playing in front of a crowd. Yeah. You know, and so like everybody put out the best show they ever did, <laughs> you know. And so uh, there's a couple bands that struggled with some sound problems and that was really unfortunate. Um, but overall, uh, it, it, it was very cool. I, yeah, it was it was really nice. Nobody was worried about, um, you, you know, masks or distance or anything. They were just they were just out there worshiping and having a good time. So, uh, yeah, I, I had a really good time. It was it was fun. Okay, sweet. Let's do uh, let's do one advice, and then we got to call it a day. Oh yeah. Okay, here we go. One advice. You guys have any plans to go any concerts this year? Is that even in your in your mindset? I haven't even thought about it. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be willing to go see Need to Breathe at Red Rocks. I think that'd be sweet. Yeah, I'd like to go check out a few shows. Definitely. Uh, okay, here we go. In fact, I'm gonna put a playlist together for you guys, especially you, Nathaniel. There's all kinds of good music for you to take in. Listen, all I listen to is. Metalcore from 2011 to 2014. <laughs> you can't those, change my ways. I got those three years covered. Like, like I still have memorized the World Series lineup for the St. Louis Cardinals from 1987. Pedro Guerrero was not in, on anybody's list but mine. Okay, here we go. Dear Life from the Path. My husband and I recently moved in with my grandmama, partly to help out and partly because I lost my job due to underlying health conditions that made dealing with COVID incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. Now that we're close to family again, some of them think that they need to dictate what we do. Mm -hmm. The biggest topic is whether I should try going back to work now. Mm -hmm. My husband is adamant that he wants me home until it's safer for me to go out again. Mm -hmm. But my father thinks it's not a good idea and insists that my husband doesn't understand quotes everything. I want. <laughs> I don't want to make either of them angry, but I feel like I need to stick with my husband. And I don't know how to get my father to understand because he's stubborn. Any advice? You moved in with your mom and dad? Grandma. Grandma, yeah. I recently moved in with my grandma. Huh? Okay. Yeah, stick with your husband. Yeah. I mean, here's the, I want you to consider a couple of things, because I agree with Dan, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide a couple just th think pieces on you. Uh, the, the dad is probably worried that you're freeloading on your grandmother. Yeah. Let's assume it's his mom. Yeah. Uh, and so... Uh, he, also, he may be looking uh, 515-517-0085. Uh, he may be looking a little bit objectively at this COVID business and going, you know, if you're going to go back to work, maybe now is okay. Given that uh, everybody at the Rise Fest either appears to be vaccinated or not caring, and I might submit to you that uh, the Menards is full of people who at least are proclaiming to have been vaccinated. <laughs> yeah. Because I ain't seen a mask in that place once they took the restriction down and they said, well, if you're not, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. And I said, well, I'll be doggone if everyone who shops at Menards was at the front of the line. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I, I just like, I don't know. I'm not sure what you're waiting for. And it depends on your underlying health condition. You do you. But like, uh, I just be hesitant. This not working thing. It just, it sticks out with me. Like, I don't know, what, I don't, like, you're never going to find a perfect situation to work, and there's plenty of job openings, and you don't want to be a burden on your grandma, and so you're telling me there's no jobs that might, might facilitate your underlying condition? You can't work from home. Everywhere works from home. Mm -hmm. I'm not even allowed back in my office for at least another three months. They keep pushing it back. Like, everyone could go back. They're like, nah, you can't even go in there. Yeah. And so I'm just, you know, here's, so here's what I would say. I think you, you stick, stick with your husband, uh... As because like that, that's that's the most important relationship you currently have. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily dismiss input that you're getting from elsewhere. Maybe run it through the ringer, and you and your husband talk about it. And it doesn't hurt to go. You know, Dad's saying I got to go back to work. And uh, is there a real, is there, are there no options for me? And just talk that through with your husband. Just let it be added in to the things that you're talking about with your husband, as opposed to putting them against each other. That's wrong. 
um, it's, 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 it's okay to, to drag those perspectives in. Um, do people a service by trying to own their perspective and defend it the best you can and then make sure it gets shaken out? Because ultimately, don't you just want the right answer? You don't want your husband's answer or you don't want your dad's answer. You just want the, the right answer or the best answer. And the way that you get that is just take both of those and talk it through with who you trust more. And that's, it. that's your husband. That's great. That's my advice. I think you should make sure you're not freeloading off your grandma. Don't freeload off your grandmother. Yeah, if you're doing that, and that's why your dad's in the middle of this thing, then you should address that. Does, does it say whether the husband? What does the husband do? It doesn't say. What is? What is? Is he a baker? Uh, a tire man. My husband is a baker. Yeah, he's a baker. Yeah, it says that <laughs> explicitly. Times are tough. Boy, you really nailed that, Ben. That's what. Just when I think you weren't paying attention, you <laughs> yeah. pull out a, a ruby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I feel good about it. Yeah, I, they might be. Um, because he says, I really want my wife to stay home. I guess it's, is he, if he's an unemployed baker, maybe he just wants company. I don't know who says He doesn't that. get along with the grandma. I want my wife to do what she wants to do. If she wants to stay home, I want her to stay home. If she wants to go to work, I want her to go to work. Whatever she wants to do. If she's like, I don't know. I, here's the thing. If you're talking out of um, fear, do some research and figure it out. If you still believe that, that, that it's a legit deal and your wife has an underlying condition that, like, she has a heart condition and it's uh, whatever, you just can't, it's a bad deal, then stay home. Stop worrying about your, about your dad. Yeah. Right? Like, I agree. Make an informed decision here. You know, like, if, 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 if your, your dad is all tooled up because for political reasons or just his own personal bias that he's decided this whole thing's a fraud and he just wants you out in the workforce and, and, and he's trying to live through you to make you do it, then... Take his opinion out of it if you don't care for it. You don't believe it. Fine. But, like, at least have done your own research, right? If it's a risk for you to go out and, and get a job, do Uber Eats, man. They'll drop the food off, and then after they go away, you go pick it up. And then you go drop it at somebody's house, and then uh, they text you the money. You don't have to have contact with people. There's jobs out for you to do. And so just make sure you're being honest with yourself. Yeah. I think you're telling – there's a there's somebody in there that's telling about half a truth here, if maybe a quarter of the truth. So, if, in fact, this wouldn't even be a conundrum for you, right, if, if, if you, somebody was telling the truth. If, you're, if your dad is all tooled up because he's on the opposite end of the spectrum on, on his opinion on COVID, then discount his, his opinion and be done with it, right? Uh, if you actually feel like it's a health risk, then discount everybody's opinion and figure out a job where you don't have to go outside. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the point is that that's not mutually exclusive. Hey, you don't want to be around people? Fine. This seems like this is the environment to find work where you don't have to be around people. Yeah, I think that you're uh, taking advantage of your grandma. That's what I think is actually happening here. And your dad is trying to an alternative route uh, to try to help you to see that, and you're not seeing it. And you've probably, frankly, you've probably represented him in the worst way possible. Correct. Like, if there's a nuance of, my dad says I'm taking advantage of grandma, you didn't mention that part. You just mentioned that he's just like a stubborn guy who, you know, went to work with 85 hangnails, and he always worked, and he just wants you to work. Yeah. Okay. Nathaniel, what's the real problem here? <clears throat> I mean, if there's one thing, it's... Uh... Never free to load off a of grandma. Yeah, that's no good. If you're going to do anything, don't free to load off a of grandma. No. Grandma's on her, on her reclining years. She's got a fixed income. Sorry, what, what were the years? Do you mean declining years? I said reclining, where she gets to lay back and be grandma. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay, not, not, what, not one foot in the grave, one foot up on the lazy boy. I didn't uh, say that. You that's said what that. you mean. I said reclining, and I meant it. <laughs> declining. No, she's just hanging out. I think she's a retired baker. <laughs> I don't know Grandma why. worked. Yeah. Grandma went to work for 45 years. Yeah. In the steel mill. Yeah. And now you're freeloading on her. Yeah. And you're asking <laughs> to borrow a credit card for Amazon purchases because you want to burn some kind of incense or oils in here. And she don't like it. She exactly. don't like them oils. Yeah. She doesn't like the incense either. Yeah. It gives her asthma. Yeah. She fixes everything with Excedrin and a stiff drink. And you got to come in here with your own ideas. Yeah. No, and she's too kind to kick you to the curb. But that's why she's incensed. Yeah. I think grandma. I think you're. Uh, yeah. I think at the end of the day, if you got to read through all the lines here, you're taking advantage of grandma. Yeah. Knock it off. And and her son is like, look, man, you got to stop this. And he's kind of going about it. The I bet grandma's talking way. to him. You think so? Grandma's saying, hey, you know, I love my granddaughter, but this has to stop. Let's get America back to work. Get back into a bakery. <laughs> okay. Segular says. Your husband is protective, and for that I applaud him. If you can't work because an underlying health condition makes you more vulnerable to COVID, then as much as your father would like you out of the house and working during the day, you cannot do it. Your life could be at risk. What does your doctor have to say about this? You are no longer a little girl. It's time for a family discussion to iron this out, including what your father meant when he said your husband doesn't, quotes, understand. If it can't be resolved in a mature and respectful manner, you and your husband may need to make other living arrangements. 
Yeah, you said a lot of stuff here, and basically I would say, uh, you're right, I am not a little girl, and I don't have to listen to you, Dad. <laughs> if your ideas are dumb, they're dumb. Well, right? But, if they're good, I'll take them as good advice. Yeah, but like, I, again, she accepted a false premise. Hey, you fine. Uh, if you're worried about dying via COVID, then you shouldn't work at all. Like, as if that's the only option. It's not the only option. No, that's true. And, like... Do you really think that, like, Dad goes, like, I would say that about just about anybody. Nathaniel doesn't know everything. Dan doesn't know everything. Like, I don't know. Pretty close. Per- but not everything, not, Dan. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay, then. I don't know. It seems like a normal thing to say. Hey, you've been listening to Life in the Past. Uh, okay, two things. Uh, maybe you're upset about what we said earlier in the show. Uh, you're going to pray on that, and then you're going to shoot us a call or text, too. Maybe you got a better dad joke, because those were not good. Mm-hmm. They were not good jokes. So uh, maybe if you've got a better one, you shoot us a call or a text, 515-517-0085. Also, just know that what Mike said about those other two shows not being out there is a lie. Because you will go look right now, and you'll see that they're out there. And what? so what he said was a false false propaganda. No, hold on. You're saying that in the future text. I'm going to check it right now no. in the present. No, what I'm saying is, by the time they listen to the show, Brown. those other two shows will be out there. And you Library. Will be, you will be proven a liar. Later shows. Uh-huh. Yes, you and Life from the Path, updated May 4th. Hey, you've been listening to Life from the Path. We appreciate you hanging out with us <laughs> and acknowledging that Mike is in the wrong. Uh, we will see you uh, sometime in the future. I'm not sure when, but it's certainly a time of which all three shows will be available. In the meantime, be faithful in the means. God will handle the ends you've been listening to live from the past